Hi, right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an ESC or electronic speed controller with a kill switch for your trolling motor. Now, this project can use either a 12 volt AGM or LiPo battery, but I'm going to program the box so you can use the less expensive AGM battery in this project. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. These are the main electrical components I'm going to be using in this project. This is a Hobbywing Quick Run 880 brushed ESC or electronic speed controller. This is a servo tester. A 10K center detent potentiometer. an on-off switch, two pairs of these XT90 connectors, and this PWC cutoff or kill switch. This is a view of the Hobbywing 880 ESC. It's about one and three quarters by one and a quarter times one inch in size. And as you see here, you've got several leads coming out. Here is your standard positive and negative coming from your power source. And then you have two blue leads and two yellow leads. And that's because it will run two different motors. So what I'm going to do in this is combine the yellows together, combine the blues together into one lead, which will increase the diameter of the wiring and help with current flow. And it'll also keep from having loose wires inside my ESC box. And then you also have the on-off switch here. as well as the connector that's going to go to the servo that controls the ESC. And then it also has this fan here to help keep everything cool. The ESC comes with this chart that has both the programmable items and options you can choose, and the dark shaded boxes are the default settings. So the ones I'm concerned about in this project are number one, which is the running mode, and I'm going to go to option three, which is forward and reverse. The next choice is going to be number three here, which is the cutoff voltage, and I'm going to disable that because that's going to allow me to use an AGM battery and not a LiPo battery. Then I'm going to go down to number six here, and the max reverse force, I'm going to change to option number three, which is 75%. And then finally, I'm going to go down to item 11 and change that to option number five, which is the neutral range. Okay, so I have everything set up now that I can program the ESC. First of all, I have the ESC hooked up to its power source, which is a 12 volt AGM battery. And then I have the programming card here. And the connection is using the right hand slot of the card, which goes over to the three prong connector of the ESC. And you want to make sure that the black wire faces the outer edge. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I have power, you can see by the light, and the programming card lights up. So the first thing I'm going to change is item number one, which is the running mode, and I'm going to change that to value number three, which is for forward and reverse. And it's already there. So I say OK. Next, I'm going to go to item number three, which is the cutoff voltage, and I'm going to disable it, which is option number one, and say OK. The next is going to be item number six, which is the max reverse force. And I'm going to set that to option number three or 75%.
Okay. And then the last is going to be the neutral range, which is item number 11. And I'm going to choose option 5. And say OK. Now it's programmed for what I want to do. This is the servo tester I'm going to be using in this project. As you can see, it's got three modes, manual, neutral, and auto. And those are LEDs that light up when you're in that mode. And here's your select button here. And you want to use it for this project in the manual mode. And then on this side, you have three channel outputs, which one of which you'll choose for your ESC. And then on this side, this is for a voltage input that you won't be using because it gets powered from the ESC connector. And it's in a nice aluminum case here. And what I'm going to do is remove it from the case and use the bottom portion for this project. So you can get in here with a little flathead screwdriver and pop off the knob here. And then on the back side, there's four little screws you disconnect. And then you can take this apart into pieces so you can work on the circuit board. Okay, to save time, I've already taken apart the servo tester box. And this is what the bottom section looks like with your circuit board. And if you look there, it's got a nice little offset here on this aluminum lower section of this tester that I'm going to use when I mount it in my box because it will help with the heat dissipation by letting airflow go underneath the circuit board. And then what you can also see here is you have the screw here and a screw here that you need to take off and then you can go ahead and remove this whole PC board so you can remove this pot switch. Okay, this is a view of the circuit board after I removed the original pot. And I did that by getting in there with a small, sharp pair of wire clippers and clipped both the posts that held on the pot and then went in there and clipped off the three leads that went into the circuit board. Once I had that removed, I just heated up the backs of the three holes that still had the pins in it. And when the solder got hot, I pulled each one of the pins out one by one, which is a small pair of pliers. Then I put in my 24 gauge single conductor wire, red, black, and white, in the appropriate spots in the holes and covered everything up with some liquid electrical tape to make sure I don't have any shorts. This is an interior view of the completed box. Here is the ESC mounted to the base of the box using VHB tape and also is the servo tester controller right here that's attached to the base as well with the VHB tape and I'm using the original base part of that aluminum box that it came in. It makes a nice mounting surface. Here is the negative and positive powering the ESC and I have marine shrink butt connectors that attach to the XT90 connector. And then here is the yellow wires, which were the positive, and they're joined together again with that butt connector. And the two blue wires are joined with the butt connector, and they go to the other XT90 connector. And then up here, where the on-off switch that was originally with this, which is this little one here, I removed that and extended the wiring out here with these two splices and what I did to connect them is wrap them together after stripping the wire off, soldering them, and then making sure that they were good connections using marine shrink tubing. And what they go to is the negative is going to go up here to the new on-off switch and the positive is going to come up here to the one terminal of the kill switch and then you go directly across to the other terminal of the switch and you run another power jumper to the power connection of the on off switch and that will give you your cutoff 
for emergencies. And th these ones here were marked M, and these two vertical ones were marked C. Sometimes they'll be marked different, and so you'll probably have to do your own testing. But what you want is to get power with the key inserted in your kill switch. And so when you pull the key out, everything cuts off. So you might have to test it to see how that works. And then I have my three wires here where the pot used to be in the original servo controller going here to the 10K center detent pot. And that's what the interior of this looks like. I wanted to mention when you're adding all your components to your bottom and top of your boxes that you lay them side by side when you're kind of sizing everything up because you want voids in the bottom part of the box for anything you may install in the top of the box. So when you close it up, you know that everything's going to fit. And you can see I have my voids here that should be able to fit these two components there, as well as the, the larger one, the kill switch here, I have a nice void in there. So that's just something to remember when you start drilling holes. I wanted to go over the exterior design of this box. So up at the top, you have the PWC kill switch with the key. Down towards the lower end, you have your new on-off switch. And below that is the 10K center detent pot with the new knob. Coming down to the one end, you can see I have the black gland nut labeled battery for the battery connections and a white gland nut labeled motor for the motor connections. And what I also did to further differentiate between the two, for the motor connector I have the white zip tie on it so it's color coded and nothing on the battery one. But then just to make double sure that you don't make a mistake. Here is the female connector coming out for the battery connection, which means it needs the male to be connected to the battery for it to work. And then coming out of the motor, I alternated that and had the male come out from the box. So you need the female to connect from the motor to make everything work. So there is no way you can hook this up wrong. Okay, so I have everything hooked up. I have my testing trolling motor on the left-hand side. And if you look to the lower left of the screen, you'll see my prop. And that's how you're going to know if this is working or not. I have my standard 12-volt AGM battery there. And I've got my completed box. So let's go ahead and turn it on and test it out. It's spinning and that's going to be reverse, I can tell because of the speed. That's the center detent off. Now forward. That's working. So I'm going to reduce the speed. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the key. So oh, everything works like it should. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.